Hi everybody, welcome to Game Go Podcast, a podcast where we talk about video games and whatever else we want to talk about. This is Hate Bit Hero and Sonorith. Yeah. Hey guys, how you doing? I hope you're having a good week. Um It's been hot. Yeah. It's getting hot over here in the Southern California IAs. Yeah, uh before we get into the video game stuff, there's a few smaller things I wanted to mention. Spider Man Homecoming came out. I saw that on Friday. It's very good. If you haven't seen it, I mean, even if you're skeptical about the first five, <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm in that camp, definitely. I mean, um, it's better than the last three, which isn't much, but I think it's even better than the first two. So, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, go watch it. It's very lighthearted fun, uh, but it still is part of like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it's it's still serving a greater picture, but it's still a lot of fun. Um, um, you're not going to have to rewatch the or the same origin story you watched before. Oh, yeah, no, they skip over that entirely. Probably one of the best things. Is it's like yeah, how many times do we have to they, like they, every every Batman Uncle ben. does the same thing, where they show the origin story, the beginning. They've done that like three times in the last. Yeah, 20 years. let's 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 get. A, we know how Spider Man started. Bite, go. Yeah, uh, Stranger Things two, coming out on Halloween at first. Now it turns out the next season's coming out the twenty seventh of October what instead. Di- uh, I was wondering what day Halloween was, but yeah, should have hmm. looked that up before. We- 31st. Because I'm wondering, no, no, no. Oh, not day to, what day of the what week? What day does it land on? I'm wondering if that had anything to do with uh, why they would change it then. Because, I mean. And maybe they want people to, like, be pl- dressing up on Halloween as the characters for the people that are, like, binge watching it and are like, this will be cool. They will essentially kill Halloween if they release this on Halloween. For, uh, I yeah, get maybe. It. I uh, get it. And we are recording this on 7 11, so go get your free Slurpee if you have. Uh, Future vision. Yeah, if and, you uh, happen to be listening to this somehow in the past, then yeah, go ahead. Uh, just get ready for your free Slurpees on Seven Eleven. Yeah, we got one for the the heat. Yeah, that. it's too hot. <laughs> this is ridiculous. All right, into the video game stuff. Uh, Dion Demucci, I think I'm saying that name right, uh, of Dion and the Belmonts. He's suing Bethesda for use of the song, his song, "The Wanderer." Oh yeah, in ads. I'm a wanderer. I'm a wanderer. I'm a wanderer. <laughs> he, I'm a loving them, loving them, loving them. Yeah, he I, found I, the ads to be morally repulsive because of all the murder going on in them, and uh, he says that if he had the the choice, he would have. You would have pushed for a more like survival oriented uh, trailer. People are calling him a hypocrite because his song's about sleeping around. Yeah, I don't the... quite think that's as bad. It, you're you're not taking lives, and from the the tone of the song, it's it's all consensual. Yeah, that's true. But also, just to begin with, it's I don't know. It's still a song about sleeping around. I don't know if what grounds you have to stand on to judge anybody for anything on it. Well, cool, you're not killing anybody. You're still talking about being sleazy. Yeah, but if it's if it's consensual between two people, then we, you know what? We don't even need to be talking about this because the whole point of this is that they didn't give him the okay. He didn't give the okay for the ad, yeah. which is a, a clause that he included when uh, he sold the song to Universal. I was going to say that is the legally uh, uh, actual relevant point. Yeah, people are like, he has to prove that there's murder in the trailer. I'm like, no, he, I mean, for whatever reason, that is the focus of this, but he just needs to find, you know, did did Universal tell Bethesda that they need his okay, or did they hold that information back, in which case then maybe he needs to talk to Universal instead. Should have got the quote, because I really wanted to put, or really should have said that, but what, I mean, I don't think he should have said anything r- about at the all. Moral... He should not have made a statement about his opinion. Just sh- you have a case already. You <laughs> have the legal backing. You didn't need to. You didn't need to say anything else to make it seem like you actually have uh, some kind of reason to be doing this. Just you uh, – no, we get it. People want money and you saw oh, a way to do it. Maybe it's not just that. Maybe yeah, he actually, people think he's just money hungry. That's but. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of on the same boat because what the, how relevant is your song and right now as we speak now Fallout 4 even. Yeah. You know, Th- that game came out two years ago? Year yeah, ago? but he might not even have known about it like – which makes it all the worse. <laughs> anyway, we'll we'll see how that shakes out. Um, uh, Valve is banned; uh, their largest ban wave ever so far. Forty thousand Steam users. Uh, that's that's a lot. That's more than three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is more than three. Their anti cheat system banned forty thousand people the day after the summer sale ended. Yeah, um, that was kind of a. It was dirty and sneaky. Yeah, let's actually let's talk about that. Um, yeah. So they banned them specifically so that they couldn't just make a new account and like 
buy the games on sale again. Yeah, I was a little bit confused, them. but it's like basically, oh, okay, I bought this game for like a dollar. Oh, and you banned me? Well, F it. I'll just buy it again under a new account and I'll keep doing my doing whatever I'm doing, you know? Yeah, which now they can't do because it was after the sale ended. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, I, they shouldn't be cheating in the first place. But at the same time, if, if they knew they were going to be banning them, then they should have banned them immediately instead of like letting them pay and then get banned straight up and outright should have been the, the more the professional approach yeah this is a professional like yeah corporation like a, a company definitely would have been a lot more uh would have looked a lot more i don't i don't want to keep repeating the word professional but i can't really think of anything any better yeah it just seems dirty that they are like in a movie like oceans 11 you have a thief stealing from what is essentially another thief. Right. In this movie, this is a company who's like, no, 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 give us your money, you're fine, and then banning them. Like, nope. So it just it doesn't have the same, like, rooting for the little guy thing. This is a big guy who is like... Yeah. As much as, uh, okay, yeah, they cheated, but it's not like they're breaking laws or anything like that. It does upset every, like other people in the community, but I don't know how far they are okay for... That like we're saying, they should have banned them outright, not waited for this potential where they make some money off of them with the sale, and then cut them off from the service that they and that they the way they planned it. Yeah, it, it kind of, that that kind of seems a little bit weird that it was premeditated. It's like if you know you don't love somebody and you wait for them to like win the lottery and then you divorce them. <laughs> <laughs> like no, like it does because that, it's you're, like you're, you're absolutely correct. You're waiting to like till it's financially no. viable for you to. I'm cut gonna them divorce loose. him after he gets this new promotion. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. It, it just seems dirty. I don't know. Uh, I don't think cheating is by any means like acceptable, but they should have been banned immediately uh, right. instead of after. I mean, it says it's an anti-cheat system, which is like why. You you told it to wait until after. It's yeah yeah it's uh, anti cheat seems preventative not uh, not exploitative. Yeah. <laughs> um, with the band, whenever your account does get banned, uh, if you had any CS Go skins, it's Counter Strike Global Offensive. Right. That was actually going. Those were actually going for a, a good a decent amount. Like so some of these guys were just uh, every time they got banned, they'd go ahead and sell a couple, and then they'd basically get their library back. Uh, so included with your ban is also the uh, what? How are they referring to it? Their skin collection. That like <laughs> you're just you, you don't get yeah <laughs> <laughs> you don't get your skin collection back once uh once your your account has been banned, preventing that from happening. So now you know unless you have an actual job and are willing to spend your earned money, money you know yeah you're not gonna get those games back easily using the things that you got. With these tools, you know. Well, I mean? I mean, I'm not sure how much the cheating would affect the CS:GO thing, but that is that those are worth money. That's worth thousands potentially. Uh, yeah. So I mean, you hit them where it hurts if you take those away. Speaking of Steam, though, uh, Tony Hawk HD, that's eighty uh, percent off right now, and it's going to be taken off of the store soon. Rest in peace, Tony Hawk. Kind of like Alan Wake. Um, we talked about that a few weeks ago. Yeah, uh, Alan there's... Wake was never so rough at any point in its. You yeah, know? this game. Eh. I'm not sure it's worth it even at that 80% off price. It just, it, it took a really, really nasty, uh, nasty slide downward in quality. I don't know how long ago into it, but it was pretty soon. After, after American the, Wasteland, I think. I, I would, I would, I would venture to say maybe a game or two before well, that. that was even. Thug 1 and 2. Yeah. <laughs> Thug, Thug, I think Thug was great. 2 Thug, maybe. Thug 1, you could, uh, you could give it some leeway because it's like, okay, no, this is the first time they're trying to take that whole story approach to a extreme sports game. Okay, we'll see what they do with it. And the it. story was satisfying. It was, yeah. <laughs> then then the Thug 2 happened and bam, by then Jackass and Bam Margera was such a big thing that that's ba- basically all. Uh, you were going on tour with them in the story. That's what it, yeah. I, and, and it was, and again, it, it was still kind of satisfying. It was a lot less. I oh, was, it was, it was more like silly. Which I mean, considering the kind of game it is, I think that's it's merited. But uh, after American Wasteland tried very much to be like, "This is your epic. You're a nobody coming yeah. into Hollywood." To that skate. was that was a little bit too reliant on storytelling. So you guys need to dial back this whole comic booky heroic. Yeah. It, uh, I don't know how epic you think skateboarding is. It's pretty badass. It's, cool, it's awesome. But it's not like... Yeah, people make careers off it, and you know, some of those people are doing things that. You know, I'll never be able to turn Nine, 900, to 900. <laughs> like that. These are amazing feats. I don't want to downplay that. But also, this isn't a biblical 
epic or anything like yeah. that. Let's just skate. Let's just skate. Yeah. <laughs> but so the, now we don't even get to do that. We'll we'll probably never do that with Tony Hawk again. Yeah. After the reception to five. Five and this HD one. They yeah. just they both did poorly. They did not do so great. They were not ported well. Um, yeah, July 17th is the last day you can purchase it. It'll be going down at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yeah, like I said, 80% off. I don't even know what it is full price, but I <laughs> th- th- I don't see any reason for getting yeah. this even then. If you didn't, if you don't have it by now, you probably have I, no I interest in buying it. I loved this game. I loved this game so much and have, was like lucky enough to have the opportunity to like test extensively on this game. But it was very disappointing to see where it went after... After those, after that time, after my time with it. After you left, it all went downhill. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Uh, Overwatch news, Doomfist. He was being teased last week, and he finally bust out onto the PTR, the public test realm. Yeah, it was really sudden, too. Uh, the... uh, yeah, there were some hints at at his appearance, and all of a sudden he was there. Yeah, yeah. Like, there was, like, there were, and they weren't even real hints. There were leaks, weren't they? Data mining yeah. leaks? There was some data mining leaks, and then they just, just, screw it. Okay, throw them up. And that little <laughs> anime video that the... Uh, He's fighting Winston, Genji, and Tracer. It's pretty pretty sweet quality on that he thing. It's, Tracer. It, is, it doesn't seem like it's just some like handed off to some crappy you know yeah, uh, no. animation studio. I don't this, know who did it, but the studio they did a Batman one where he's fighting Bane and Catwoman helps him. I think. Okay. And it's like it looks like it's set in like China or something. Like the characters all look really cool. I'll, I'll yeah, it's really cool. Uh, they definitely earned that like this job. Of, of making the video, and okay. I would love to see more like an Overwatch anime. They definitely did it right. Is seems just it, it. People are clamoring for a freaking like. We need <laughs> a series of this. Just yeah. stop messing around. Why is this only like as long as it is? We want freaking like a good you know twelve episode thing of it. It looks amazing, but data mining has revealed some summer games items. Uh, last year they did the uh, Rio for the Olympics. They did summer games event for um, Overwatch. But people are finding references to Doomfist, and he's get. It looks like he's getting four items, and uh, people are speculating that one of them is a skin, which would be cool to see him. I love seeing the new skins on characters when they come out, like uh, Arissa. And uh, if he gets a new skin right away, that'd be even better. Though I, I can't imagine what it would be. Maybe if he's like a goalie and he's got like a giant glove, I, I would maybe want to see yeah, that. Being, you know what would be great is just a giant novelty baseball glove. Or if uh, <laughs> it's not even an Olympic sport. Um, or if he's diving instead of like punching, he's diving and then hits you into this goalie glove. Oh, okay. For All the right. ball. I got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I... I Kind of, I'm pretty excited to try him. I haven't yet, because he's not out on the the regular public uh, game yet. Yeah, not sure when that hits either. No, it probably another week or so. Okay. Castlevania. Castlevania. Jinx. Castlevania is gonna is not getting an animated series. It already has one. Four episodes on the first season uh, up on Netflix. It's getting met with such such good uh good review that it's. They're already getting a second season, and it's going to be eight episodes long. That's fantastic. Already confirmed. Adi Shankar, the same producer who was on the on the first four episodes, presumably is on board. I don't know exactly what presumably means. They're um, assuming he's going to keep going on this money train. No, but I mean, does that mean that he's already confirmed? Did they already get him? Probably not, and they're assuming yeah. he's going to stay on it. They are already working on Assassin's Creed animated series as well. This is really good news because, I mean, when Movies. I was... When I was growing up, if it was going to be live action or a movie or a cartoon or animated and it was tied to a video game, it meant it was going to be a waste of your time and money. It meant that you were going to have a terrible time sitting there watching it. Mario Brothers was a great example. It's a horrible freaking movie. Street Fighter. Street Fighter. Oh, my. There's one Hadouken in the whole freaking thing. And it's <laughs> it, the guy, it, the, the Ryu in it does it like three inches away from the chest of the, I think it's Ken that he does it at. That's his friend. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah. Even nowadays, like you have Angry Birds movie and Warcraft and and those Assassin's do, Creed doing so much better. Well, they're doing better, right. not great still. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I should say they're they're kind of mixed. But right here, it seems that everybody's unanimously been saying good things about it. I guess uh, music is apparently yeah, which the I don't blame it, considering thing. how great the music is for the games. Yeah, and if it was as elaborate in the show, then I feel like maybe it would steal the show a little bit. Okay. Yeah, they because Castlevania had some damn good tracks that like <laughs> still stick with us to, like to this day. Bloody Tears, or Vampire Killer, those are good. Um, but yeah, I want I, I actually still need to watch this, and I think I will like by the time we have our next episode. Yeah, by next episode, I think I'll be through these. Four it's only a hundred minutes for all four episodes. Yeah, so it's like a movie. Yeah, worth checking out. 
problems near and far. <laughs> I hope you're proud of yourself. I am very proud of that <laughs> subtitled section. Uh, so the game Nier came out a little while ago. Uh, Nier Square Enix Platinum. Yeah, Nier Automata. Sorry. It's been out for uh, for about four months. Console players, not too, no, not too many uh, complaints from them, but on PC... There's been a lot of uh, a lot of complaints about both resolution and frame rate issues. Just general performance is not as great. The port was not handled as well uh, getting it uh, from console onto Steam. So there's been a lot of uh, a lot of people complaining about that. And despite this, the best that uh, anybody's gotten out of Square Enix uh, when re- when asked about the PC port is that they're going to be working with manufacturers like AMD. The hints at uh, NVIDIA because who the hell else could they be talking to when they're talking yeah. about man, uh, hardware manufacturers that they're going to talk to them about helping with fixing the issues. They say the issues are not what Square Enix and Platinum Games alone can resolve fundamentally. With AMD's help, Square Enix and Platinum Games have successfully resolved some of the issues and we hope to achieve similar results with other hardware makers, i.e. NVIDIA. There's nothing hinting at a fact that we're going to get a straight up Steam uh, update or patch for this game to get it working right, which is upsetting. Yeah. No, no one here is a is a little guy. These are not indie developers. The, there is no reason that the wheels on these trains couldn't get them moving quicker, sooner to something else. Yeah. Especially considering the fact that they already have DLC out that they're happy to charge you for. Right. <laughs> and still haven't even put out a patch to fix actual problems for the game that they charge you for. <laughs> yeah, when people... Uh... Talk about developers being like money hungry or greedy. Uh, you know, it's hard to like really to condemn a developer. But in this case, it's more like, what the hell are you guys doing? Yeah. How how could you possibly think it's okay to be charging money for this when you haven't even fixed the game? Some priorities are not set here correctly. If, yeah. If they're if they're on you getting money before the customer having a Working an actual product, product you yeah. know, I wouldn't consider it a, a product if it's it's not complete. You know. Uh. uh you guys have your priorities set backwards, man. For anybody who is looking for a way to get some relief from these issues, Chaldean, which who we covered before, I was kind of against on some of his practices in regard to the mod. But I was as kind long, of for him. Uh, yeah. As long as you have a completely legitimate version of the game, which you should anyway, uh, yeah, Chaldean's patch will fix both the resolution issues and some of the frame rate issues by adjusting some kind of, uh, there was some brightness or reflection a thing. A global, that I read in the notes. uh, setting that is normally invisible. Glo- okay. All right. Yeah. So you can affect that. And it was saying that some people got up to 60%, uh, uh, frame rate performance back by dumbing this particular setting either up or down. I'm sorry. But basically it gives you a tool to mess around with something that will, would more than likely improve your gameplay. If you did uh, steal the game, though, it probably won't let you play. Oh, yeah, sorry. That is the other caveat, is it'll lock it up, right? You know, if you try to, if, you, if you're agreeing to, like, the, uh, the EULA, the mm-hmm. end user license agreement, and you accept it because you stole it, it won't let you leave that. It'll accept it, and then it'll come back up, and then if you accept it, it'll come back there up. There we go. So he, he said, like, if you're not going to honor theirs, I'm not going to honor you saying sure. Right. Um, which I have no problem with. Yeah. Is it, see, this isn't like Steam where they're like, he's taking money from them and then doing this. This is something he distributed for free. And it's like, if you want to use this thing that I do not have to give you, you have to have a legitimate copy. Right. It's, he's completely well within his right to do it, however. Yeah. But I guess, like, my thing is, I guess, how do you feel about actual vagil- vigilantism? Because that's kind of what I feel this is right here. It's then just own. don't use the mod is like the, the only thing I can offer. Right. And, huh? yeah, Square Enix, you need to get your shit together. <laughs> More so. Yeah, which, this which is a professional. Over, over all of this, you know what, how, like, all of this could have been avoided is... Is if Gotham PD did their job yeah. and locked up the Joker so Batman Wait. wouldn't have to. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We talked about ARMS a little bit last week, and uh, we announced, or we talked about the announcement of Max Brass. We didn't have a hard date. We do now, uh, July 12th. That'll be... The day after today that we're recording now, so either uh, hopefully either the day of or the day after that this recording comes up. The day before the recording. Day before, yeah. Or, You'll be yeah. able to get uh, Max Brass as an unlockable character, as well as uh, they're going to do a new multiplayer mode with uh, head. I didn't really have the name, huh? No name yet for it, but you're going to, you and like two or three other fighters are going to fight 
for the headlock mask, there weren't a lot of specific details as to whether one person's going to have it at get-go, if you're going to fight headlock, if the mask falls on the floor and you pick it up like the items from, uh, not like the items, or, or if they're going to be in proximal items like the ones in uh, Grand Prix mode. But uh, yeah, you basically fight for the mask in some way, winner of the mask, gets to use the six arms like uh, like Headlock would, and the other characters are going to fight to take you down for their turn with the mask. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you just have to take them out before they take you out, or, or yeah, if they'll get their turn when they beat you. Lots of questions. Can't wait to update tomorrow. So to commemorate Destiny 2, PS4 is really getting a new bundle. For $449.99, you can get a white one terabyte console, comes with a white controller, and then it, uh, with Destiny 2, and then you get a voucher for the digital... Uh, like premium pack and then also the expansion. So for four forty nine ninety nine, dollars 99 that's a good deal. I think like the game and the expansion alone is almost 80 bucks, maybe a hundred. Right. And then the cost of the console and the control. Well, the that's control. a, yeah, that all, that all comes out to, that, that comes out to a pretty good value right there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and even if you don't want the game, you can just sell that back. Maybe the, the, the voucher too. Uh, and then you have a, a white ter- one terabyte console. Which I believe the only way to get this white, uh, I think it's called Glacier White, and it's only in this bundle. It makes it special because it's not just regular white. It's Glacier White. TM. Yeah. Um, if you don't want to pay for Destiny, you can play Warframe, which I've always described as a poor man's Destiny. Uh, it's, <laughs> that's not quite a fair assumpt- uh, assessment. There's more of a parkour ninja vibe to it than like the knights and weird. I st- haven't played it myself, but watching a couple of videos, I was like, this looks a little bit like some vanquishes in there. Yeah, it's actually a spiritual very, successor, I believe. Okay, yeah, all right. We very, about that very earlier. actiony. Yeah, there's a lot more parkour and like running, uh, double jumps, dashes through the air and stuff. It, it's very Getting fast paced. Cover like from point A to point B real quick. It's not even necessarily cover because you go nope. out there and you're slicing enemies up. You're using special abilities on them. Okay, maybe I'm just <clears> thinking more, uh, more vanquish. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think they took the game in a different direction here. Okay. Um, like you can jump into basically a procedurally generated dungeon for a mission with three other people, and You'll run around. You can do stealth kills by sneaking up on them, and then there's a prompt for that. But then you can also use abilities. Like I have somebody – I have a special – they use suits. So my suit's called Mag, and yeah. it has magnet powers. So you can, like, yank an enemy toward you, and it just does a ton of damage. Or if there are a few clustered up, you can pull them all towards you. And all if right. they survive, you can, like, start chopping them up and stuff. It's really cool. It just – it has that Destiny vibe where it's, like, you have the special suits with the futuristic uh, – I think they even added, like, a little talking companion, kind of like a Nolan North like okay. ghost character. <laughs> And uh, this game is, we're bringing this up because they're releasing a new expansion called The Plains of Eidolon, and it'll it'll basically make the game open world. I'm not really sure, like, how that translates, if there's still going to be those missions, and then you can also go into the open world area, or if they're just going to completely change it. But it's set to release later this year, and uh, I I will jump back into it for this. This looks pretty cool. I, I want to... Like this is generating interest to me. You should. Check I'm not it out. gonna. I'm not gonna have seen what it was gonna be like beforehand, but I, I think I want to check it out. I mean, you can still try it right now before it's. Yeah, it's yeah. Although I don't know if uh, this expansion is gonna be free because the base game is. So right. I don't know if they're gonna release an expansion and then charge for it or. There was no mention at all of pricing. Yeah, at I didn't all, see right? anything like that. I think it's safe to assume it's gonna stay free. Yeah, we'll update if that's not the case. Yeah. Although, uh, one thing that is getting a price, Ark Survival Evolved, that's doubling in price to, in order to get it ready for release. Right. Uh, and so far, it's been in open beta for a while, much like Daisy or some other games. Yeah, yeah, we covered some of those, Yeah, too. The, some of those games have been in open beta, for, uh, early access, I'm sorry, for a yeah, long time. Years, yeah, years. Literally years. So finally, this looks like it's getting ready to go into uh, the main... Into an actual regular public retail. state. Yeah. <laughs> so the doubling in price, people are saying the pre-orders are, are an important part of that. And hopefully the game ends up being worth the price because I, I know I have a copy right now and I tried it a bit and it just didn't. It wasn't my thing. Uh, I had a friend that I was working with who got really into it. He got really creative and ended up creating a pterodactyl on the uh, – or sorry, a pterodactyl with a small base like <laughs> wow. living situation on its back. So you can fly around with his house, basically. That's amazing. Uh, I w- maybe I'll try that again. But uh, yeah, that that game is uh, finally getting ready to go to retail. That's which is that's nice to see. Yeah. Some, look, Instead something. Of just... Hey, everyone else in freaking public beta, early access. It, it, in uh, early access, look, it can happen. Yeah. <laughs> Half Life uh, One got an update. 
Yeah, not Half Life. Then it's not that Half Life Three is coming out to continue the series. <laughs> yeah, if only. Uh, it's getting an update, mostly pertaining to uh, some mod files. It seemed like it was very specific, like very technical. Yeah, a lot of some of the stuff seemed over my head. I they, there was jargon involved. I didn't want to get too deep into it. They got it. They got an update. Kind of weird. It's Half Life One. The last thing that they updated Half-Life 1 with was, I believe, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> was updating it with another freaking uh, freaking sequel. Uh, it's kind of weird, though. Just It was completely out of the blue. Didn't seem like there was any talk about it before or after. No hints towards it. Uh, just, hey, here's an update for Half-Life. It has a lot. The patch notes include a lot of actual, like, thank yous towards people who had written up the bugs and, and, and helped them get nailed down details of certain issues. But, uh, yeah, it, it's just really weird that just out of nowhere, bam, here's an update for Half-Life 1. Obviously, Half-Life 3 confirmed. Yeah. Uh, and it's been pretty hot lately, but to beat the heat, Persona's releasing some Christmas skins. Ah? Uh, Literally Christmas in July. When you think you're cool, you'll be cool. Exactly. Uh, and by putting on a sweaty Santa suit. They're that... releasing Christmas skins for the characters in the game. By the time you're listening to this, it will be available, uh, and it's free. Yeah. Uh, Along with, uh, they'd also released some swimsuit and uh, butler slash maid costumes, also free. So you check those all out. I got the butler costumes. They look pretty cool. The characters get, like, gloves and, like, the black and white uh, suits. They look great. That's pretty awesome that they're just, hey, free stuff. Come on. Yes. There's, there's a lot of costumes you can buy, which are re- references to, like, the previous games in the series. Okay. Those are pretty cool, but, like. If I don't really feel crazy about dropping it uh, money on these, then these look these look pretty good too. You got you got a couple options. Yeah, cool. So, uh, Sano, you've been playing Final Fantasy fourteen. Oh my god, I've been playing Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> Enjoying that? Yeah, me and a few friends have been. I'm almost to the max level on one class. Okay. And 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 you can play any class with a character, a single character. Okay. All right. How long? How much time investment was that? I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> a lot. <laughs> Uh, but it's been fun. You know, it's not nearly as much of a slog when you have both friends, both IRL and uh, I, met, I made, a, yeah, I made yeah. some friends in there. There's a clan that I joined or they're called free companies in this one. That's it's basically cool. like a guild. But they, they give you bonuses for being in the guild as long as that guild activates them. Okay. So that I can get more experience for fighting or for crafting things. Nice. Yeah. And then if you're teleporting everywhere, that usually costs money. But then you can also activate like a reduced uh, fare, basically. Okay. Yeah. So it's. It's got its uh, advantages, both the group and then just playing with friends and stuff. It's cool. Fun times. Yeah. I don't know why I never really jumped into any MMO. That mm. one's definitely worth trying because you can switch to any class that you want after a certain point pretty early in the story. Okay. So you never have to, uh, you commit. never, you're not going to commit and then have that route like, oh man, now I that hate looks being fun. a healer. I want to try a DPS, uh, you know. You just reclass at any point. Yeah. And then you keep the progress on the previous class. That's pretty awesome. Uh, All right. Yeah, it's it's fun. It's uh, like having other characters. It's pretty like much, yeah. Multiple characters. The only problem is that you wouldn't be going through the main story with them, so then getting experience for them is harder. Oh, okay. But if you have a character that's high enough, then you get an experience bonus on all the lower level character uh, classes that you have gotcha. to build up to it. So uh, the main story is pretty good. It's lengthy, but I've only gotten into the main one. Not even like after after a Realm Reborn, they did a big chunk, and then they did Heaven's Ward, which is the first expansion. Okay. And then they did Stormblood, which is the newest expansion. Yeah. So there's. Even I only bought the base game, so even then, there's a lot for me to to, to get through. Okay, wow. Definitely worth checking out, and I think that you can play for free up to, like, level 15 or something. Yeah, okay. Uh, so worth checking out. Such a, that was such a good introduction. Yeah. No more no more time-based demos. Instead, it's level-based. Yeah. Also, I should say, sir, uh, for Stormblood, the final mission is called the Royal Menagerie. There's a eight-man kind of mini trial you have to do. People are saying that it's too hard. Uh, some of the community says just to learn the mechanics because there are, like, when this happens, you have to stay here or move here or avoid these attacks or avoid attacking this creature, just move out of the way. There's a lot to learn, and some people don't want to try it or they think it's still too hard after they they think they've learned it. Hopefully, you know, it's, it's hard to say whether or not Square Enix is actually going to lower the difficulty or if people are just going to get better with the help of other, you know, community members. Right. I'm wondering what it really is if it is just like, hey, do people maybe not understand the fundamentals of that fight? Yeah. They're going about it, you know, entirely wrong. If you only saw this one bit, maybe you'd, you know, I'm I'm wondering, I'd like to see what Square does about it. 
Yeah. Do they do they themselves feel like, oh, okay, maybe this is too hard. Let's just dumb them down. Or are they like, you guys just aren't seeing it. It really depends on how many people are finishing it versus um, how many, you know, people are like the silent majority is is a thing. Right. Where these people are happy with it. Or maybe it's a minority. Either way, there are people that are happy with it. Probably aren't saying anything. anything. Yeah, they don't complain. They, versus just like 10% hey, of them saying like, this is too hard. Please change it. You know, and that's all you see. Right. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that uh, shakes out eventually. Cool. And then what have you been playing? I've been, uh, so I had been on my binge with Fire Emblem and I finished oh, up, uh, is it Conquest? I think it was Conquest. Um, finished that up and I was about to start the other half of it. Revelations? <laughs> no, Revelations no, is the Conquest third one. and Birthright. Sorry, I finished Birthright. Conquest is the one I was about to start. And like maybe two, three turns into the new game, I'm like, no, I've had enough Fire Emblem. This needs to stop. Turn-based battle, medieval. Yeah, at least turn-based battle. Yeah, yeah. Uh, So I stopped. I was like, what else do I have on my 3DS right here? And I had not started Severed. Severed was sitting there on my 3DS for a while. So bam, tapped it. I, I, I just tapped the icon, kind of like just whatever. I just need something to get away from Fire Emblem. And it was like the best forced decision I've made like in a long time. Severed is a damn good game. I friggin' love it. Um, the, it throws you right in. You begin, the, the plot isn't too big a thing. You're, the, the summary is you're playing as a girl named Sasha who just lost her arm, i.e. had it severed, Uh, you find a sword that allows you to kind of uh, cut pieces off of the different monsters in this world and then use them to craft new abilities for yourself. You craft abilities and different passive bonuses. Your health buffs, your your, uh, attack buffs, you level up your sword, you level up your your body, you level up your... uh, You get a couple of uh, magic abilities... And you level those up as well. It's, uh, what is that game? Grimoire, Grimlock, something? Are you familiar? There's a, uh, uh, the the game is, it's in first person, but you're traversing a map room by room. And Etrian then, Odyssey? Yeah, Etrian Odyssey does it. Well, sans the map building, but uh, it's it plays like that, where you're going square by square through different tile. Every square may, may not have something new in it. But you're traversing different. Uh, you're gonna. You're traversing three different dungeons, looking for your family who you got separated from. Without saying any spoilers, like that's as much as yeah. So in every one of these dungeons, you're out looking for a different family member, and uh, oh man, combat in the game, it gets taught to you. And tutorials are a little bit rough. They feel a little bit weird. Like they don't teach enough, or they just go through too much. It just they the. They're like they were done they 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 were done by someone who doesn't really do tutorials like it, they were trying to tell you all the right stuff but just it was kind of weird the way they handled it i i don't know exactly how to explain it but i know there were some points where i was confused i got it it wasn't too big a consequence for being confused there anyway yeah <clears throat> once you're taught how to fight and you go out there and fight i haven't had so much fun swiping like wildly on my screen cuz that's how uh while it's RPG-ish in that, you know, you're picking up items and, uh, and leveling your, yourself up, it isn't a turn-based. Every time you get, have an enemy encounter, the enemies will surround your character. So anytime you're fighting, you're actually fighting in place of the square that you encounter the enemies at. And every different enemy has, like any other game, has different uh, uh, patterns, patterns of attack, different ways that engage their attack and uh they do a lot with the buffs and debuff system of this game i i I don't know it's great when you're swiping at the screen every one of these enemies feels like a tense anxiety driving little like action puzzle like on any other ds you might have some uh, qtes these guys, each and every one of them feel like one of those with a life bar attached to it that is killing you slowly I haven't maybe in a long time seen a game that'll do this that has you sw- swapping between enemy and enemy as you're looking at the bottom uh, where you see its ATB meter uh, uh, filling up. 
you go, you're swiping and concentrating on one enemy, and all of a sudden you have to go and jump to another one and dodge its attack. It's just, it does a really good job with the action. The the, the graphic style that it's got, it's really unique. The enemies look really, uh, I, I can't say scary like they put fear in me, Grotesque. but they do look not bloody, but definitely these teeth are going to gnar you apart. They have these big clubby hands that have studs on them that look like almost archaic and dinosaurish. Another one has like this three arms that has like this bulbous thing that has about like 20 eyes on it. Another enemy is like a swarm of eyeballs. Yeah. One of them like in command and it uses the other eyeballs to protect itself. It, it, it sounds like a Zelda boss. Yeah, yeah. Describing it right now reminded me of the one from uh, Link to the Past. With the uh, gel? Yeah. 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 They, I don't know. This game is uh, amazing. The it, it gets a little touching too with uh, what little story it does deliver. You're saving your family members and when you do go through your first encounter with your first family member that you find, it's like, holy crap, this is a little bit, this is, this, this is sad. This is a little <laughs> bit surprising. It's dark. It, get, it gets dark. It gets, it gets, but apparently there's some light hope at the end. As long as you endure, uh, some weird monster is guiding you along your way and telling you like, no, don't worry. You'll still be with your family. Things are going to be okay. Just find them all. But yeah, uh, the art style is amazing. Like I said, all the monsters look like they they could have come out of something like from one of Tim Burns' earlier earlier uh, 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 incarnations of just monsters. Something like from like all of these guys could have come out of Beetlejuice, but they don't look silly. Like I don't want to put oh, my yeah. body parts anywhere near those <laughs> things. Like, and you're over here, you know, cutting them up with a sword with only one arm. Your ma- your main character has. The game direction is beautiful. It just uses these really bright colors, and it uses them really well as they blend into each other. The colors don't uh, don't clash at all, and just everything in the game seems to complement itself really well, from the lighting to the environment. Uh, the music. The interesting thing about the music is that it was uh, it got like funding from Canada, from the Canadian government. Um, which is crazy. It later ended up also getting best musical score from the Canadian Video Game Awards. I don't know if there's some insider stuff right there going on. <laughs> but um, on the trailer, <laughs> listening to the music right now, it sounded amazing. I'm playing on the 3DS. It was also out on the Vita originally. But uh, one of the th- complaints I've always had about the 3DS is how Weak. terribly low the sound can be. Yeah. So I, I honestly, the music sounded great right now. And I was like, wow, I don't. I have, I've, this is the first time I'm hearing any of that stuff, and I wish I could hear that stuff a lot clearer on the 3DS. But it seems even quieter than some other games. Like, I'm, I, like I said, I'm playing through Fire Emblem, or I was playing through Fire Emblem, and I can hear some of the music on there fine. Um, but I, I don't know what was up with having it so low here. Check the options to make sure they weren't uh, set down. Yeah. It's at max. Um, the sound of the swords and the enemies, I can hear some of that stuff, and it sounds great. I wish, I really hate, the, unfortunately, it's carrying on with the Switch, too, about the sound. But Oh, really? Yeah, don't really want to get off track there. Games by Drinksbox Studios, it's freaking great. If you can play it on, uh, if you're going to play it on Vita, I guess try and do it with a stylus. I don't know if it has one. I some, think it's on Wii U also. Oh, is it? I believe so. I wish I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah. that also makes sense. I mean, it's got the touchscreen, and then you got two the, screens. the two components you need for it. So yeah. the game's great. The game's amazing. If you like, I, I don't even know what kind of game to call it. But it's just it was it was a very awesome game that takes advantage of of the touchscreen and the perspective, the first person perspective that it uses there. Yeah, watching the trailer looked great. Uh, how much was this? This game's on the eShop right now for fourteen ninety nine. And if you get it on one, on a Wii U, you get it on the other, the 3DS, they will, one, one code works for both. Uh, it's also on the PSP, or sorry, the PlayStation Vita, though I'm not sure how much. I'm pretty sure you can find it used somewhere for very low. If there's anywhere still selling those, I think GameStop still carry them in limited amounts. Yeah, probably. Fun week playing that, and I can't wait to finish that game up. Uh, coming out this week on the Horizon... Uh, Thursday on July 13th, day of or after this is up, uh, As Divine Cross 
Is it As Divine? This as Divine Cross on 3DS and Frisky Business on PS4. On the following Tuesday, the 18th, we got Destiny 2 Beta Early Access uh, for PS4. Xbox is going to be on the 19th, the day after. Orcs Must Die Unchained is going to be on PS4. And Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles for PC and PS4. So this week, uh, well, this last week, um, Serena asked me, if I ever played a game and felt immersed in the character I was playing as, and I said I, I couldn't think of any at the time, if anything, like, I don't know how to explain it, but with, like, Tomb Raider, I was playing as Lara Croft. I didn't feel like I was her, but I felt like that her actions were mine. I don't know how to explain it. I didn't feel immersed, but I, I put myself in that place. Do you, do you, do you have any idea what I, I mean? I thought you were going to keep going. No, like, that's I'm, I'm trying to elaborate on that feeling. Like, every time she died, I wasn't like, oh, no, I died, or oh, no, Lara died, but, like, we died. I it's hard to explain. Right. One of the big things about, like, game design is trying to get your character, or whether or not you want your character to be the player. Yeah. You know? And, uh, I feel like, it's weird when a game does it right, because it's not necessarily whether or not it's in first person, third person, whether it's realistic or not. Yeah. One game that did that to me a lot was recently I played Lisa. Oh. That is a 2D crappy as hell looking game, okay? Yeah. I, I love the game, but it is not winning any awards in the graphic department. <laughs> and that game did every time that I had to make a decision that, uh, and I was streaming it, so everybody was talking about how like, oh, dude, if you do this, you're going to lose this. Every time that I, I went over a new screen... I knew that I was going to be presented with some new option and it was going to suck either way. Yeah. Because of that, like, it made me feel like I was really, I really needed to think about being in that position where shit, like, do I care about these other people, these party members? As a gamer, they are valuable tools to me for draining the HP of my enemies. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. But then also, they were good enough, like, like they had good enough little bits of not straight up dialogue, just their just the little quirks. things that the quirks that they'd have. Yeah, it made me feel guilty if, to 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 just kill them, especially when they were also presented against other options with uh other people that you had to care about in the game. It just it's really hard for a game to make me like sit there and think like I'm sitting here in my studio playing this game. But when they're asking me those questions there, I I swear I I look down, I close my eyes and it's like shit, okay, I'm I'm here, I'm balding. I'm 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 in a poncho now and I need to do I want my left arm? Do I need my left arm or do I need these three guys that are my friends even more now? Yeah. It's really hard to make me think that stuff because of the fact that for the most part I guess it's there's no consequences usually. Whereas in this game, it was going to make the game so much harder depending on the decision I made there. And in certain certain ways, it was also going to make it harder. If I've been going crazy on Fates, but at no point did I feel I was ever in that game. Yeah. I wanted to get through it the whole time with just as much excitement as any other game. But I, I was watching a bunch of animated chess pieces go around a board, not a bunch of you know, friends and, and, and Allies quirky and, characters, yeah. you know, they, they were, they were, I viewed those guys as more tools yeah, and I was just sending them off to fight. Like as, wizard's chess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wizard's chess. <laughs> so she asked me the question and I was like, I don't think so. You know, most games might try to make me feel that way. And for the most part, I, I don't feel like I am ever that character. The only exception I think so far has been elite dangerous. Mm -hmm. where you play as the pilot of a ship, uh, of a spaceship. And it's a, you start off with a small one. You can sell, you can trade or take out bounties on, on criminals or ferry passengers to other star systems and earn money and upgrade your ship. But you never see your face. And the whole time, the controls, the, the keys are controlling your ship. So, like, I'm in the cockpit on the screen and it makes it feel more like this is me tapping the keys to make my ship go forward or to take off. Like, you have to land manually. Uh-huh. It's a cool feeling when you can, like, nail it. It's, it's not cutting to a cutscene and doing it. No, this is all you, like, even when you, like, okay, I need to launch. So you push this one button to, like, lift yourself off, and then you turn and you take off, put away your landing gear, you're off 
to explore new frontiers. That is the most I've ever felt immersed in a game. Okay. And I even considered buying like the flight stick with the throttle and like the, the joystick to really sell that idea. That game also has a VR component. So I uh, this is like one of those games where I kind of want to play VR. Oh, and, okay. and this seems more than more than anything else. This seems like the kind of game that would really like make me feel like I'm in the game when I have the headset on. Because you're already seated. That's how you are the whole game. You're in the cockpit. So I mean, this. I think that that's one of the games that can do it best. We talked about like uh, Doom VR. You're moving around in that. You're teleporting. Mm-hmm. So even if you are, you feel like you're looking around taking demons apart with your bare hands. I feel like the movement is lost in there, and it's hard to. To immerse yourself in a game where the movement is not one to one, you're right. you're standing and you move the control stick or you push a button to, to warp forward. You know it's not the same. Like I think the game has to make movement out of your not control, but like so you don't actually have to move. So like Elite Dangerous, you're sitting down. That's perfect. If you're in a game and you're on a moving platform in VR, then that also I think works. Although maybe you would get motion sickness because. You think you're moving in the game, but in reality you're not. You're just sitting still. Or you're even just standing. Uh, and then some games do that thing where you st- sit in the middle, you're standing in the middle, and then enemies come from around you. Oh, okay, beachhead style. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't... As far as immersion, I think the, uh, Elite Dangerous is the closest I've ever gotten to that. There's... I know, I don't, You mentioned earlier about first or third person. I don't think I could ever play a game that's third person and feel like that's me. Because mm-hmm. Skyrim, I did that. Right. But I played that primarily in third person. Okay. You make your own character at the beginning. Uh, you don't do that in, in Elite Dangerous, and I think maybe that's even a better uh, argument for being uh, immersive is that you just assume the character looks like you. Yeah, you would you. never have to go through a – you're never in life ha- going to have to go through a you creation screen. Unless you're getting plastic surgery or something. I guess, yeah. Or DNA-like <laughs> manipulation. Those are pretty good specific situations, but – Outside of that, barring medical surgery. <laughs> or like in Fallout 3 where they're like, here you go, you're born. What are you going to look like when you grow yeah, up? Yeah, that was weird. Uh, but uh, like I think just the presentation of, of hey, create yourself. What? Like I i don't have to create me. I walk into a place, fill out a form, and then I'm doing the thing. You yeah. Know? Like, Did you um, – do you think any games like really try – like what, what, what games have really tried to like sell immersion – I know Skyrim is like make your own adventure, so I mean that's probably one argument for like, or not. Sorry, not Skyrim specifically, but I Elder Scrolls to bring in general. Up th- not just those, but Bethesda style big RPGs, open wide open RPGs. These guys typically try to sell you on the fact that like, oh, it's like you know people are gonna act and react in the ways that they should because you know they have their own affiliations and you have. Your motives and and your your gender and type and your 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 class, like it's trying to sell that, and sometimes it works, but uh, I guess a lot of other times it kind of got too many of its own quirks going on, and just too many things that call out to the fact that it is a game. You know, it is constantly going from slow motion to regular. Yeah, like the finishers in uh, those games. Right. You're constantly switching camera angle from back and forth. So sometimes game mechanics can get in the way of allowing the player to feel immersed. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, You know, one other thing that really always gets me, like, I don't know if it's really immersion, but like whenever I'm playing Mass Effect, Mm -hmm. uh, if there's like a romance option, I'm always like, would I or would I not like be with that person? Romance is one of the hardest things to get. Yeah. Right. As far as immersion, and you know what? Well, romance is one of the hardest things to get right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, because on the like I, we talked about this a little bit with uh, when we talked about Dragon Age Inquisition, mm-hmm. um, as far as uh, equality in games. Right. Some of the characters were, were lesbian or just didn't have the romance as a, as a motivating factor at all. Mm-hmm. And so, as as games, th- it seems like games are becoming less of a power fantasy and more of like a different world entirely. A where simulator. Yeah, where you're not just doing the things that you want to do and, and being with who you want to be with. It's more like this is the world that you are thrown into. This is, you know, it's not all going to go your way. Right. Uh, so then it's it's hard to like really – and I don't know if that breaks or if it makes more um, – more for, for a more immersive experience. It's – like I said, the first example was Lisa, but I have absolutely nothing in common with – you know the the, the character Brad. there. Yeah, I I'm completely separated from this guy, and yet I felt like I was in his shoes every once in a while. Whereas 
Yeah, like you're saying, game like uh, like Skyrim, almost designed to just, you know, hey, live your life and see how things would go around it. Like, yeah. You know, it, it that doesn't do anywhere near as good a job there. Yeah, and then even games, like, you didn't have to eat or drink in Skyrim. But then, you know what? They, they did have you um, in the survival mode for Fallout 4 you had to eat something you had to drink every once yeah, in a while you or you would constant die draining yeah. bar you couldn't fast travel you could only save when you went to bed so then i i think that is probably way oh and bullets did way more damage both to and from you know you so i think oh uh, bullets weighed as well oh yeah ammo had a, a weight to it now instead of just being a weightless thing so i think that's probably another i mean fallout vr when they bring that out if you're playing survival mode you're going to be ducking more bullets are flying at you right uh, i think that's probably another good contender for an immersive game. I'm wondering, as someone who has yet to play any VR games, I think that's the real big challenge. Like I'm saying, there are some of these games that I'm sitting here on a freaking couch, but I think I'm, I'm, I'm I, I, if they do it right, I feel like I'm in it. You might get me to like actually twitch nervously because, you know, there was an intended jump scare. You might actually get me to emote as, you know, some games do. Like, VR... I'm wondering, especially with a game like uh, Resident Evil, Ooh. I I really want to get that and put it to the test. Like, am I going to be a VR guy? Am I going to like this? It's been, I, I mean, one of the biggest things I like about gaming is when it can take you out of what you're actually doing and sitting there when the escapism really kicks in and you, you're just like, all right, cool. Like, I am no longer where I was. I don't feel like the tired guy after work. I am actually kicking a dragon's ass and having a damn good time doing it. Yeah. Uh, fighting games do it a lot for me where I get into this really awesome competitive like like mode and I'm just out of whatever situation I'm actually just sitting in and I feel like I'm in the I'm I'm in the game. How great would VR arms be? I just it's <laughs> that would potentially be amazing like being able to just first person see all this stuff going on watching your arms flail out all the way out actually you know ducking and dodging oh my god that would be pretty freaking cool <laughs> uh you heard it here first um <laughs> right but patent, uh, pending patent pending, patent, I, actually, pending. I forgot that i tried uh, a vr demo for the oculus rift or the vive one of those two uh, at e3 at a best buy oh that's not e3 uh, like <laughs> i think when i got my iphone actually okay um and the first demo, I believe you're just looking at a paper craft city. Okay. Like you're, you're, it's an island and you're like floating over it like some sort of omnipotent being. And you can like lean in. I leaned in because there's a little, like there's a fire and a little fire truck came along and like was trying to put it out. It was really cool. Uh, that didn't really do it for me. The next one was you're on the edge of a steampunk skyscraper. There's a Zeppelin up in the air. There's a big bridge, steam everywhere. And the guy, the, the demo uh, attendant's like, look over the edge of the building. So I do. And I got, like, vertigo because it really does look like I'm standing on, like, the 187th floor of a skyscraper looking down outside. It was terrifying. That's freaking amazing. And I actually stepped back thinking, oh, my God, that's ter- – that, no. <laughs> um, <laughs> there was another one where you're, like, in a clearing. That one was all right. But the one that really got to me besides the, the, the skyscraper was you're standing in a hallway of a museum, it looks like. And, like, on one side there's banners, on the other side there's fossils. And if you look at the banner, it says, like, Hammond's T-Rex walks the earth again. Okay. So, like, oh, this is cool. This is, like, Jurassic Park because then the, you can see the T-Rex fossils on right. the other side. But then you hear a thud. And you're like, no. <laughs> and, and then you hear it again. And it starts you, at the end of the hallway, like, a good 100 feet away, maybe more. You see the snout of a T-Rex come around the corner. <laughs> and it's looking at you, and you're like, oh, my God, that looks just like in the movie. Hi, buddy. <laughs> yeah. And then it starts walking towards you. And then that's the part of the movie that you just don't really get to see or, or experience is the the scale of the thing. Right. You see Jeff Goldblum or um, what's his name? The guy that plays Grant in the first movie. Yeah. he. Uh, you see them running from the T-Rex, and you don't really get how big they are until you're standing there in a museum hallway. Yeah. And it's towering over you. And I'm like kind of like cowering a little bit in fear because this thing is like <laughs> I had the headphones on too, so you can hear it breathing. You couldn't feel it, obviously. That would have been a bit too much, I think. But yeah. like it sniffs at you, and then it does the roar from the movies. And then it's like, okay, I'm done with you. And then it just walks over you. And I remember ducking because I thought the tail was going to hit me on the way out. <laughs> I think... Oh, my God. 
Although, I mean, it's VR, so I think that the whole point of that is to be immersed in the world that you're playing. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't really feel fair to say that that is the most immersed I've ever been when that is far and away the only point to it. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, like a game like Lara Croft, uh, like Tomb Raider, it, it never really pulled me in as, as, as an immersive experience. And neither did like Final Fantasy or Diablo. Those felt, well, Diablo was more of just like destroy as much as you can, get as much loot as you can, repeat. Right. And Final Fantasy... Big RPGs like that, those just feel like movies that you're watching and participating. Yeah, they're telling. In. They, those are typically telling you someone else's story. Another yeah. group, another a group of friends, or heroes. their story. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, it's hard to really pinpoint what what would make a good immersive game because, like I said, romance options in some games make me really put myself into that character's shoes, not in like the way that like I really want to be with this person, but more like if I was this person. And in this situation, leading like a suicide mission, uh, like in Mass Effect Two, what, who would, where would my head be? You know, where would I want to spend? Who would I want to spend my last days with potentially? Right. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I, I, I love the idea of being more immersed and feeling. You know what? Minecraft does the same thing for me. That world does not look anything re nearly realistic. Right. But when I'm playing, I'm like, I don't want to go like be an epic adventure person. I want to start a farm. Okay. Grow some carrots, uh, sugar cane or whatever, make paper, books and stuff. So maybe that speaks to me as like a player, like that the fact that I'd rather have a bunch of cows and chickens and a farm than to be the guy looking for diamond at the bottom of the world. Okay. Um, I, but yeah, that's a game I think too I'll, that also – and it's cool to like play around with it and see what you can find out. I made like little snowmen that will wander around leaving trails of snow where they go. And if I was down in the dungeons, like attacking bats and slimes and and zombies, I wouldn't have found that. Right. So it's it's. I don't know if that's so much immersion as it is like just doing what I would do in that world. So little off topic, tangent. Yeah. On that, there's apparently for most games that most major games where they involve various aspects like the, I guess you call them the 4x games but also MMOs and just games that involve a lot of people in them you can separate the types of players into four different groups yeah you seem like an explorer well there's also I think they said that the four categories uh there's there's it's an x and y axis one of them is like right interacting with the world versus with players and the other one is exploring versus I think combat no versus um I know I don't know what the other side of it is, but yeah. But you know what I'm talking about. Yes. Where it's like you'd rather explore, be a trader, be uh, more of a fighter, and then there's one more thing that's like. The way it was described to me is a uh, killer explorer, um, and I forgot the other two. <laughs> Killers always get really good at the game and are just just basically get off on on being better at you, better than you. But explorers like you, like what you're talking about, you didn't care about going down there getting a bunch of numbers up. You were having fun with the game systems and figuring out how how they work, and then eventually you discovered that snowmen leave a trail, and you can go ahead and follow that. Well, and they come to life. Wait. <laughs> I built a snowman. It came to life and led a trail away, like wherever okay. he wandered. Okay, so that's even more like that's even cooler of a of an experience, right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what do do you know the other two groups? What they are? I think there? that one of them was a merchant. Uh huh. Uh, we can we can look it up later, okay. but yeah, no, it's a it's a a really cool thing about how people interact with the world or the people and in the it. And the people in it, yeah. Oh, social. One of them was socials, so or, or like people who are just social. And yeah, we'll stop talking about that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like that uh, whole little. I don't remember where I read it. It was it was like for a certain game mm -hmm. coming out that said like we want to cater to these four people. Right. These are the systems you're going to be able to really dive into. Uh, but you know what, MMOs actually never really. They don't pull you in, do they? And I think Hobby. the problem there is that, like, when World of Warcraft was first announced, it's like, oh, my God, you get to be this huge hero uh, for the world of Warcraft. But then right. you're playing, and there's, like, a million of you. <laughs> you're not, you're not a, the when hero. When everyone it's is your, special. You're a hero, yeah. When everyone's special, no one is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so you're, like, uh, you know, you talk to somebody, like, oh, my God, great divine hero. And it's like, yeah, well, you said that to the last guy, and you're going to say it to the next one, too. Like, right, right. It doesn't mean anything when you think you're calling it. Or <laughs> I'm playing next to my friend, and I'm watching you have the same combo. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, so I think that's also part of the issue. I mean, maybe the solution is to have 
I mean, it kind of already exists as a survival games like Ark and uh, Minecraft, but to have like a first person MMO, where mm, I don't know how that would work though, because see, what we're saying is like I don't want to have to make my character. See, mm-hmm. I, Elite Dangerous, I think, is the closest to that because you don't make your character. Everyone else sees a ship, and right. that's what you're piloting, and that's the keys that you're pushing on the thing are what you, what you, how you interact with the world. Nobody sees the comparison between your character and you. Yeah, and I don't have to make your, that. Your, your identity is the ship, and that's something that kind of just everyone is okay not having to scan, verify, and do all the vital checking that you would do with another person. Plus the fact that everyone has this ship to start with seems more normal than for everyone to be the great hero yeah, of destiny. You're, you're a great hero. Like, that person is a great hero. Like, that, but no, you're just... Impl- you're, you're, you're what are you soldier are you em- you employee, i think you just graduated from yeah like a government you're like government pilot employee thing. number three three five and you can go and be a pirate <laughs> if you want or you can go and you can be a, an explorer that maps the frontiers because the map the universe in the in the world of elite dangerous is massive uh-huh. it's, it's the universe and people have only explored like so much of it 0.17 percent like so, i mean that's an exaggeration but something small right. like that so if you zoom out on the map like here's the whole thing and here's where people have explored it's like a you real can go to the map. frontiers and start exploring and sell that data back that's pretty freaking for people crazy. yeah uh it's really cool if you guys haven't played elite dangerous i would check it out maybe with the flight stick because then that really immerses you in the experience nice I, uh, but as far as other games, like I can't think of anything that really pulls me in like that. It. I know that there have been other ones. I mean, uh, I remember feeling like kind of, for lack of a better word, it sounds weird to say, but intimate with a game. Like I didn't pull down my pants on it, but I mean, <laughs> like it just felt like I was more into it. I know it's happened with a couple other games, but I, think I can't think of time of... maybe because Link is a child. And then there's this fantasy that you want to be an older person. When I played it, I was I was pretty young. You okay? So, so you it, had you it, had that going on. I remember talking to the character and being like, "I'm gonna save you from Ganon. Like, let me go do that thing." You know? Yeah. And especially Marin, because I'd I'd already seen on my brother's playthrough like the ru- the ranch gets ruined. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I remember like thinking. I have to try and stop that from happening to you because you're one of my favorite characters in this game. <laughs> okay. All mm-hmm. right. So younger you is trying to figure out how to save them using using the time logic. Yeah, I think Ocarina of Time is probably the earliest example for me. Okay. I'm I'm uh, I know I love the hell out of Earthbound, but even that game, I don't know if I'd say that I was immersed in it. Well, because you have a party maybe, of characters. Actually, you know what? Maybe towards the end that that last fight, the last dungeon is not even, it doesn't even feel fun. That oh, last no. dungeon, it, it, I, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to say it. The, the, what's it called? The, it, uh, Earthbound was probably the first game that really made me feel like I was in there. I was, I was scared to keep walking through that oh, cave. Man. I didn't want, like, I, by the end of the the enemies of the last your sanctuary location the eighth one in the volcano uh in the um that just those enemies were already scaring me they were starting to take on figures of maniacs and 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 spirits Ooh. and then in the last cave everything still looks kind of weird and silly but the game definitely took a way more serious tone all of a sudden yeah you have literally lost your body you don't you i don't know if you know about the ending where you know and F your spoilers. This is Earthbound. If you haven't <laughs> yes. played it by now, F you. Uh, but yeah, like last dungeon, you trade your physical corporal body for robotic bodies because your physical bodies might not make the transfer or the, the, the transference through time because you oh, wow. also go through time in that game if you yeah, don't know. Yeah, I think I've, I remember hearing some of that so, with Gagas, right? Yeah. You might not survive the trip, so a scientist puts your consciousness into uh, robotic bodies, you guys all go on the rest of the fight from there. <clears throat> and yeah, you go on this nightmarish fight from Gygus, which is inspired like halfway by, you know, the, 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 the writer Itoi accidentally walking in on a rape scene when he walked into a movie theater and walked into the wrong oh, theater. Oh, man. Like, that's... yeah, he, he went to the movies. He bought a ticket for some movie that he wanted to watch. He took the wrong left, <laughs> and, and he walks into the rape scene of the cop is raping some chick. And, that's horrible. Yeah, and, and the thing she's saying is, it feels so good, which is, like, as anybody who's beaten the game knows, that's like Gygus's line. 
Mm. It feels so good as like beep, 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 beep. The text crawl gets slow and like just creepy as fucking hell, man. Yeah. I had no idea what the hell was going on with the background. This is a kid's I, game? Yeah, man. Yeah. it got it, My heart was starting to race. I didn't know if I wanted to beat the game. As I, I've been playing this for a while. I I don't know if I want to see how this game like goes through. As I, I, I didn't know what the hell fear from a game was outside of like I was startled by the duck hunt dog when I was real little. Like that that thing gave me a couple of nightmares, but oh, for wow. completely separate reasons. Um, well, and in the background of that fight is like uh, it looks like a child in development. Yep, there's a, this weird fetus looking thing that's glowing in all sorts of weird ass crazy patterns. It starts to stretch, distort. It's it more of a silhouette, not... but it's still like unsettling. Yeah, it is. It is not uh, uh, a comf. You are meant to feel uncomfortable Just, yeah. the entire time, and he does it effing right. You like know, the attack, the, the his attack constantly says that you cannot comprehend Gygus's attack, and it's like the, you're entirely right. Like I took damage, you don't see really what happened, and it's it couldn't describe it even what's happening to you as the player. Like, like mentally, better. you cannot fathom. You have, like why there's no the way. fuck is this boss even a thing? Why? How is this happening? What is going on? I'm scared. I hope I save the world right now. You <laughs> literally get by on prayers. Literally. Um, it's funny that you mentioned Earthbound because it just reminded me of another game that really immersed me into it without uh, Undertale. Yep. You you don't create a character. You, the whole game, they're talking to you as as the character Frisk. Like you never, I don't think you even have that name. No, the whole, they don't. They just refer to you as they. Or the human or something. Or the human until um, until the end. And so every choice that you make in that game, whether or not you know it, ends up affecting the world around you and your your how the game ends for you. And so like when you're playing the game, it just it's very easy to like get sucked into it as as somebody who's experiencing it because you're meeting these characters for the first time as this stranger to this land of monsters is. And uh so it just you become attached to them whether or not you you know, however you deal with them, it very much affects you. Yeah. Uh, the game's been out a while. I'm just going to say, if you're fighting Sans, it's difficult. Both, you can fight Sans? It's difficult both emotionally and then also <laughs> physically beating him. Oh, my God. Yeah. Because the, the fight opens up with his strongest attack, as he says. Like, why wouldn't you just use that right away? Mm-hmm. He has to recharge it. So then at that point, that's when, like, the actual fight starts right. as he's trying to build up to use it again. And it sucks how it long it takes so... you to figure out to get past just that beginning. <laughs> and the game breaks the fourth wall on that one. You have to, like literally push the boundary of where your character yeah, can move. Yeah, your play area has to get shoved. <laughs> yeah. And it, it's... That fight uh, undines. Yeah. And, and and then even if you want to save these characters, it's like, I want to be here with you people. How do I make sure that I don't end your world or right, get killed right. in the process? So I think that that's another great example. I mean, that's, that's cool. Earthbound and both Undertale for us. Uh... Elite Dangerous thing takes the cake for me right now, though. Just, yeah. just in terms of like, this is how you're controlling the world. I know Assassin's Creed like tried that with their, they're like, oh, and in the booklet, it's like the controls. That's how the test subjects learn best. Yeah, but in the game, to... there's nothing like that saying yeah. like, oh, pick up this control and your character will move. That you game, just, yeah. that game had a really, really nice. Um, how do I? How do you, it ended up with a very, very corporate polish to it in the end. It's very triple Oh, the Abstergo stuff? No, 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 no. no. The, oh, you mean um, the game in general? The game itself ended up with a very, very triple A corporate polish to it. But it seemed like at first it was going to be one of those games that's like, this is going to change things. This is going to, we're going to do things a little bit different. You're going to see like weird new experimental features in this game. But then nah, it ended up just being another Ubisoft. Annual release. Open world. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's still enjoyable. The it's first one. I'm not. I'm, person... I'm sorry. I'm not trying to. Uh, I'm. Down, I'm trying. I am trying to downplay it a little. It's still. There's still great games. I played like fucking four or five of them. Yeah, I, I think I played uh, most of them, and there are first person segments in the newer games, but they don't ever feel like this is me outside of the game. Yeah, like doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But um, I yeah. still felt like someone else in during those first person segments. Yeah, yeah I didn't feel like me. Like it's and it's totally like they don't give that guy a name. They don't. Give I think that, they that, do actually. I think the last one his name was like Daniel or something. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think is that all we got? 
I don't know. I'm tr- I'm really trying hard because, like I said, I know that there's other games that have pulled me in a lot more, or that have pulled me in a lot. Resident Evil, the first time playing it, I remember not being able to sleep that night. Well, was that because it was just scary, or because you felt I, you were the one? No, in the... I would say like I was. I was. It was the fear through immersion. You know the it doors. Was, what What about them? Well, how every time you open the door, like here's the loading yeah. screen. That that uh. suspe- it was that was a, that was actually a really good presentation for loading. Yeah. Like, if you're in that situation, you the doors are going to be the scariest thing. Yeah. And, and, and there's some anticipation like coming from every time that you turn that knob. Did something in the other room even hear that? Like, do they yeah. already know? Okay, now I'm going to open it. How loud is this thing going to get? Mm-hmm. Like, there's there's all these thoughts going through your head, and yeah, you don't have to factor that in in the game, but that loading. That loading, using that as a loading screen did a really good job of like, okay, I get it. They're trying Hiding to the build. Tension. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the thing too is that like the, the early in the game, those game, those doors are like your safe haven. As long as you're in a room without monsters, you're, you're pretty much fine. Yeah. Eventually though, like when they start coming back, they start smacking the doors. And at one point I ran past down a hallway past a door that was shaking. I go to load another door and right before like that room's animations end, Okay. The door swings open, the one behind me. <laughs> and then it loads me into the next room. I was like, oh my God, that was terrifying. So I, I, I think maybe you're right on that on that part where that game was creepy enough to like really pull you in. And Right, right. It was, oh, it man. had its cheap scares. I'm not, I'm not going to say that it's not without them, but I'll, like on top of that, it did a really good job of just like, I, uh, like I said, that night I didn't sleep all that well because I was scared. It happened to be raining. Oh, you no. Know? And so it was super windy. Outside the, uh, my fence. Is, the dogs. Is, the, I mean, my dogs, they would bark back. and But I mean, the, the, the fence that we had in the backyard had one of those, like, uh, a tarp on it. So it was catching wind and it was slamming constantly back and forth. Oh, and man. it's like after playing a zombie game where you're constantly hearing shambling guys like, you know, smacking on the walls the whole time in these slow rhythmic patterns, it's like, great. I guess I'm just going to stay up all night trying to sleep, wishing I could fucking knock out. But nope, that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that game is terrifying. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's I, I can't think of anything right now. It's I, I imagine... I something we should have said sooner, I think, or something I should have mentioned sooner too is the first times that you play these things too, and yeah. how, how different it is compared to like the next game in the uh, series in the series or replaying or, that first. Because one. I was also gonna say, Resident Evil three, four, none of the other Resident Evils ever ended up getting me like Resident Evil one did. To because be fair, yeah, okay, so you, you now mean. know what's going on or what to expect. <laughs> yeah, those games are great. Um, Although then the four and five they kind of moved away from the it did, yeah, traditional just horror. All action. Four seven. had its creepy moments. I was in a maze at one point and I could hear dogs running around it and I was like, oh We need to do a stream where we just sit here and watch our reactions to every single death of Leon in Resident Evil 4. <laughs> because those are like some of the worst, bloodiest vi- like the acid face. Have you seen that one? No. Okay, cool. We need to do this. Okay. We need to just do a stream where we, we react with our faces to Not- now that you mentioned that, in the first games, dying was a pretty big consequence. You'd go back to the room that you saved in. Yeah, it was and a it big sucked. deal. So when I read that that in 4, there were going to be a lot of one-hit kill enemies for Leon, I was like, that's dumb. This game is impossible then. Be, but then also... But they were... More, I think they were more... Did they have checkpoints or were they just more generous with I'm, the saving? I didn't play through a lot of 4. Uh, I, f- I remember playing through it and it was not like a big deal for me to die. It did not... They updated how far back the consequence was going to be. Yeah. Uh, which apparently that game was originally going to be Devil May Cry one. Yeah, I uh, similar endings or the too. other the other way around. I think was I'm it? Not, I'm not sure if you have that right. Maybe I know they both escape from an explosion. I think one uses a plane, the other one uses a jet ski. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, that's all we have for the week. Yeah. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give us a like, comments. You know. Yeah, we're share on it with your friends. Instagram. We're on Facebook. We're on on the Twitters. We got us uh, to YouTube. <laughs> we got us. We, what else do we got us? A lot. Anyway, if you like it, share it with your friends. The wor- word of mouth is definitely the best way to uh, to reach new ears. Uh, if, if you're enjoying the show so far, give it a, a five-star rating on uh, iTunes or the Google Play Store. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can reach us at uh, gamegopodcast at gmail.com or you can comment on gamegopodcast.com. And uh, we're also on uh, Twitter. Yeah. At GameGo11, what were you going to say? 
Before we keep closing out, let's make sure to ask them. Oh, sorry, you're right. What games have made you feel most immersed? Or conversely, what games were you looking forward to falling into, just being absolutely in that world, and then nothing the game did actually, you know, threw you in there? Are there any games for you like that? D- uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think more like. Well, well I, I guess more like the, the Bethesda RPGs. It's like, yeah, I was supposed yeah, I to feel like I was that guy. I'm not disappointed in the game at all, but it's I also know that nah, I'm, I'm, I don't feel as much as, as I do this guy as I have other games where you barely even see your character's face, facial expressions and stuff like that. You know? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, <clears throat> so let us know. Um, yeah, uh, that's about it for us this week. Uh, this has been the Game Go podcast where we talk about video games and whatever else we want. Uh, this has been Sonrith and your host here with me, Hate Bit Hero. Hey, we'll see you guys next week. See you guys. Thank you for listening. <laughs> yeah.